Good morning and welcome to the Digital Jamaica Live Show. I'm your host, Kiria Francis, and I have a very interesting, interesting show uh, for you guys this morning. We are talking about chat GPT. Well, not just chat GPT, but uh, AI tools that can help students write assignments, journalists write articles, all sorts of stuff. Um, we're going to talk about the ethical nature of these tools, um, how they are being used, specifically in schools, how they are being used, and whether or not using these tools could be or should be considered cheating or plagiarism or you know anything along that line. We're going to talk about it this morning, and I have some very interesting guests on who they're going to you know, weigh in, give their opinion. And so can you, uh, in the comments, let me know what are your thoughts um, on the topic this morning? Is it cheating if chat, GTP, chat, chat GPT does my homework? Also weighing in on the conversation this morning is chat GPT because all the questions that I would have or, you know, will be posing to my guests, I've actually asked ChatGPT and it has given me some very interesting responses. So we're going to take a look at that um, this morning. But before we get into it, I want to shout out my sponsor, G5 Cybersecurity, for sponsoring the show. Otherwise, there would not be a show because this this takes work people okay and so we appreciate um them giving us their money really <laughs> to make this show possible so thanks to g5 cyber security protecting your digital assets online visit g5 cybersecurity.com to check if your assets are secure one you know see who's been meddling behind the scenes with your digital assets but to also check if you are compliant with the data protection and privacy laws in Jamaica and not in Jamaica as well. All right. So thanks to G5 Cybersecurity. And we're just going to jump right into it, guys. And I'm going to introduce my guests. Somebody's missing. Christina is missing, but she should be on at some point during the show, hopefully. But uh, welcome, Neil Williams. Neil is a, is an information technology. Yes, Expansel. Expansel? Yes, thank you. Information technology lecturer at the University of the Commonwealth Caribbean. And he's also doing some research as it relates to these kinds of tools and their impact in schools. He's also doing some research on that. So welcome, Neil. Hi, Neil. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for uh, doing it, viewers. Thank you. All right. And next up, we have um, Dr. Okay, Dr. Clive Forrester. Uh, he's a he is in the continuing. He's a continuing lecturer. He's going to have to explain to us what that means. Um, he works in the Department of English Language and Literature in the Faculty of Arts at the University of Waterloo in Canada. Uh, full transparency, I've been no Clive. <laughs> Clive is a long time, long time, long time friend. So I'm happy to now say Dr. Forrester. Welcome, Clive. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, glad to be here. Glad to be here. So, Clive, you're formerly of UE. Yes. That's correct. Formerly of you in now at yeah, the yeah. University of Waterloo in Canada. So right. let's let's jump right into this. First, let's talk about what what is I like I like sharing screen. So let me let me share. Let's start with some definitions of what this thing is that we're talking about. So chat GPT and you know GPT stands for something. <laughs> okay, so GPT stands for generative pre-trained transformer and i'm just learning what what that is so what that means is it's actually a model 
right? And it relies on deep learning to generate human-like texts based on uh, input. So you give it a prompt and it will respond to that prompt, right? So you, the user, would feed that prompt into the model with a sentence or a statement or something. And the transformer or the language model creates, writes a paragraph or generates a response to something that you've said. So in a nutshell, that's what ChatGPT is. ChatGPT launched in on November 30th, 2022. So I wrote that on Instagram and people were like, oh, it's been around longer, but that's when it launched officially, okay? Mm. And since then, it has created, well, it has generated a ton of articles about what this thing is, should we use it, should we not use it? And schools are, are a bit antsy about it because of the nature of this very, 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 very powerful tool and the implications of the tool. What does this mean for school assignments? We need to now rethink how we grade assignments and how we use these kinds of tools. Should we ban it outright or should we embrace it? And if we embrace it, what are the implications of embracing it? So schools are, you know, they're in a tizzy at the moment because this since the launch, and and according to OpenAI, who, who are the creators of ChatGPT, they're also the creators of da Dali. Dali, I don't know if you pronounce it Dali or Dali. And Instructor GPT, which this is the sister or brother model too. According to them, within the first week, it had it had over one million users. And now, if you try to get on, right, you're gonna get. Uh, you might see something like this to say that, oops, we, we have too many people on right now. Our systems are overloaded. You, you can't get onto it. This is how popular this tool is. I got this prompt this morning, right? So it's a very popular tool. A lot of people are using it and a lot of people have concerns about it. It can generate, if, if used incorrectly, fake news articles adding to the fake news that we are already having an issue with. Um, it can also um, generate misinformation, disinformation. It can be a tool used for misinformation and disinformation. But as I like to say, the tool is not the problem. It's how the tool is used. That's the problem, right? So I went ahead and I you know, asked ChatGPT to explain what it is, but also to explain, let me go back to the previous conversation, um how should schools use this in, should schools ban chat gpt should chat gpt be regulated if schools were to embrace chat gpt what are some of the policies and regulations that school need to put in place to make sure it's not abused how can chat gpt be detected in school assignments i asked it all those questions guys and it gave me some interesting responses but let me hear from Neil first. Neil, what are your thoughts and feelings? As a lecturer at a university who have to mark papers, you know, issue assignments and mark papers, how do you feel about this kind of tool? Um, well, it's a tool that has the possibility for being a very positive force, all mm -hmm. right? And, um, and that <laughs> it can only be a positive force when it's used in an uh, honest and responsible way. So, so there is a so there is an issue of what will um, ad, the administrators of school what are the nature of the policies that we'll have to come up with, uh, what are the responsibilities with regard to the students. Um, right now, as it is, we're, we're sort of uncharted territory, where educational institutions institutions, school districts, etc., are really scrambling because of the speed to which this tool has been adopted um, mm -hmm. by students, how it has been spread by word of mouth as something that they can rely on to get their work done. So mm -hmm. it certainly very has been very disruptive, um, disruptive in the sense that it really has just radically changed um, or has a potential to change, um, you know, established processes. And, um, and so, it, it, it is certainly a, a game changer uh, from what I am seeing in terms of 
from even the developers and, and, and reactions from persons like Musk, who was an initial investor in it. Yes. It appears to be ground, groundbreaking. When I first realized that I had to um, sign up, which I think it was probably the second week, it was when uh, Musk tweeted that it was quotish, quotes, scary good. He called it scary good. Mm. And so, you know, I kept hearing about it on Twitter because I follow Musk, I follow some of these um, persons behind it. Mm-hmm. And and then I saw the reactions from common um, individuals, regular individuals who started remarking right away how, what the, the nature of the potential that it, that it had. Mm-hmm. All right. So um, I think when used correctly, it is of uh, it can have a great benefit. Um, but you know, we we I guess later on talk about what needs to be done, how to to really um, control its use in in schools and outside of schools. Also. Outside of school as well. So, yeah. Funny enough, I while doing research for the show, I realized that Elon Musk was initial um, part of OpenAI, yes. and that he and the current team there is in loggerheads because he's like y'all tapping into data from twitter y'all ain't paying for it and if it's not going to be an openware um tool y'all gonna have to pay for this data so there's some back and forth between elon and open ai that i find very interesting but yeah he he had to actually exit just because of the work he was doing with with, um tesla so it was kind of a, a conflict of interest. So yeah. as far as I understood, he sold his stake to Microsoft, which is what I read. Uh, uh, but of course, um, Microsoft is like a big investor in it now. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're coming up with, an, with a chat GPT tool. Yeah, I saw that when I was doing research as well. But um, Clive, Dr. Forrester, yes. <laughs> what's, your take? <laughs> what's your take on this tool? Uh, well, so I, I more or less agree with uh, what Neil uh, just said about the, I, I guess, the reactionary approach from educational institutions. But so uh, most universities, if not all of them, have what is called an academic honesty policy, right? Right. And mm-hmm. An academic honesty policy or an integrity policy, whoever these universities refer to it, is usually extensive and robust enough to cover just about any kind of cheating that students could uh, come up right. with. It's just that the, the, the methods with which students um, you know, cheat sometimes it tends to be very advanced, tends to you know, evolve over time and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But the academic, inte- or the academic or integrity policy changes very slowly, right? Yeah. Um, which means that whether it is the faculties, departments, or individual professors mm-hmm. will from time to time talk to students about, you know, whatever new method there is to circumvent doing honest academic work. Mm-hmm. And usually they'll have a conversation in class and that kind of thing, which is what I've been doing. So you, you, this scrambling to try to get in front of chat GPT is a waste of time. Um, oh, you think so? <laughs> yeah, because if, if 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 this is an arms race, the students have won the first part of the, bat- the, the, the battle, right? This this entire year is a wash, right? It's it's going to take, um, because you, you know if you think about the way that assignments are usually produced at the university level, professors spend a lot of time thinking about the assignment and that kind of thing, especially as it relates to writing assignments. Mm-hmm. Um, and once the professor kind of has it down, the assignments don't change from year to year. They don't change from semester to semester. Yeah. Right? So it, it's possible that um, an, a, an assignment could exist in a course for years unchanged. Mm-hmm. No, ChatGPT comes along and ChatGPT can do the assignment in 10 seconds, right? Mm-hmm. It simply means that it's the assignment now that will have to evolve. Oh. Um, because you, you, you can't now backtrack and tell students, uh, uh, don't use it, <laughs> because it's there and students will use it. And, and based on some of the, 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 the um, arguments that I've heard from students um, in articles that I've read online and even in class, 
So a student might say something like, um, I understand the concept that is being taught in class, but I am a second or third language learner of English, and I'm not very eloquent in this language. And I use this AI to help me to produce my essay. Mm -hmm. Fine. Um, and, and in a way, I, I, I could understand. I, uh, I would buy that. Yeah, I could understand such a thing from <laughs> uh, a student who might be worried about um, failing a class because they're not as proficient in the English language as somebody who is a native speaker or learned it yeah. uh, in schools or something like that, right? Because I encounter a lot of students like that at the University of Waterloo who are learning English as a third language, right? Mm. And it's not their strongest language and they would prefer it to, to use a tool that would help them to produce these essays in a manner that would earn them a decent enough grade in a, yeah. in a class on academic English or something like that, right? So my approach has been to embrace the technology. I'm already showing students how to use it to um, incorporate it in their, into their assignments without mm -hmm. breaking the academic policy the academic honesty policy at a university. So right. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to work it now into the way that I teach because yeah. um, here's the thing. One of the things I said online was that it's going to be difficult to rely on professors to be the, to be the AI police when professors are going to use it too. <laughs> yeah. Professors are going to use it too, right? Right. Um, you know, I, I used it to, 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 to generate a reading list. Because it can, right? And you see, unlike um, Google, for instance, unlike a Google or Yahoo search engine, which doesn't communicate with you in natural language, chat mm -hmm. GPT does. And you yes. can have a conversation about the, 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 the reading links that it's generating. And you could say, all right, fine. I want sources that are only 15 years old. And I want sources which um, concentrate on, for instance, a particular region. Mm -hmm. Are sources which are more politi political in nature. Right. Now, obviously, I think you could do this on a university database. You could use a database to to, mm -hmm. to do this search. But you see, when you're doing it and you're having a, like a conversation with the AI about refining yeah. the search, um, you term, can't do that with a university system. Is 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 going to be clunky? It's going to be cumbersome. It would take mm -hmm. forever, as opposed to. One the one minute or less one prompt that, that chat GPT yeah, yeah. uses to generate its responses. So I'm saying embrace it. Forget trying to stop students to, from using it. That that is dead in the water, right? Mm -hmm. um, students are going to use it, professors are going to use it. Yeah. Um, we, we may as well try to evolve the way that we think about uh, designing assignments. That is going to take a while. Yeah. For some institutions, this will not happen until four years from now. Yeah. For for others, it could happen as, as quickly as later this year, right? For it. We need to embrace the technology. Uh, for, for now, what I'm seeing for now is a, you know, a, a response that is very reactive um, to it. It's not like this tool is new. AI tools are not new. And you're seeing this very reactionary response. So the New York district, one of the biggest schools district in the States, have banned it. And so, uh, so has Baltimore, so has Los Angeles. So there are several states that are now banning it. And I think that's a very reactive, you know, reactionary approach. It's, it's kind of a, this is what we're going to do until we can figure what this thing is and figure out how to use this thing. And people are saying I, that may not be the right approach to take because you may put put yourself and your students at a disadvantage. We're going to talk about that too. I see somebody in the chat say, you know, papers should be written by hand in class that will solve everything. And I actually did see an article where a professor said he's not going to have to change the way he does assignments and he's going to have them start the assignment in class and then <laughs> do the assignments over several sessions and then produce a paper at the end. And that's one way he's going to combat AI. But we'll, we'll see about that. We'll talk about that. So, well, Christina... If I could just respond to that quickly. Sure. So that's not really a way to combat AI. So, so <laughs> That's what he idea. says. All right. So, so I'm seeing um, Akeem's suggestion that you should just write it by hand. Well, first of all, that's crazy. That won't work because... Um, People need time to sit and think about writing assignments. And sometimes it, it was just not the opportunity to, to do it in a, in a class time. And then to have to read students' handwriting. Hey, listen, it's not like me. When I grew up, people taught me how to use handwriting. 
nobody's teaching students how to use penmanship nowadays. So I'm not going to struggle to read students. I, I, exactly. Are you going to sit there and try to read? Because I write exactly. bad. So forget you, that. Listen. But, but the, the other part <laughs> of the suggestion is, is um, a, 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 a way of producing assignments called scaffolding. So you give a stick student up in it, an Stick up in that, yeah. though. Stick up in it. We're going to talk about it. Though. Stick up in it. Okay. Stick up in it. Cool. Christina, welcome, welcome, welcome. Christina is the president of the Jamaica Union of Tertiary Students, and she's also a current student, right, Christina, at UA? Right. And Christina, how, what, what are your thoughts on chat GPT as a student and as a representative of a body of tertiary students? What are your thoughts on, on a tool like chat GPT? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it somewhere in the gray area? How do you feel about it? I think any tool really, especially one like chat GPT, cannot really be defined as good or bad. Uh, I think it's really a matter of how it is utilized by students and how it is that um, the university um, responds to that use. And you realize I said responds to that use because different universities will respond to it differently. Uh, in terms of students, let me start off by saying that students have always utilized different platforms to assist them in doing their assignments. That's right? for sure. Let's start off by <laughs> saying that. And there are two ways in which students do that. There is one where they go onto these platforms that already have assignments that were done. And um, Professor Farsa spoke about it where assignments don't change. And so you find like a study doc or a study notes or these kind of um, platforms that have these assignments and the answers there. And students go there all the time and replicate it. They may just paraphrase it and submit it. And many times these different um how you call it, uh, plagiarism detectors like a Turnitin, for example, don't actually catch that the students have replicated um, these answers. So that's one. And then you also have services, especially here in Jamaica, that allow students to pay for their assignments to be done. So let's address um, the point that students have always been able to utilize these different platforms. And because of that, it's why I agree, Professor, um, first, when he says that universities' um, ethics should have already been ready to address these matters because you already are aware of these different platforms out there. So it's already a telling point that our universities aren't truly responding to the responsive. realities, right? They're not responsive to the realities of our world. Um, and that is a bigger as a is a bigger is a bigger topic that we need to look at, but at some other at some other time. At some other time. Okay, right. Um so touch on her, you touch on her for me when you said people paying to do a service because there was one time where at least I was like a side hustle where I <laughs> I had a little racket going on in university myself. Oh my, <laughs> yeah, man, I understand. So yes, so that those are two ways students currently, you know, utilize. Mm -hmm. So chat GPT, quote unquote, isn't anything new in terms of what it provides for students. Mm -hmm. What it does, however, though, is a it's a platform now where many students can access. Once you sign up, because I have signed up just to try it out. <laughs> Just to see what it does. Um, mm. I hope Norman Manley not listening to me right now. I'm not using it for anything, <laughs> Norman Manley, right? I just looking at it as the president of students. <laughs> and um, I think it could really be useful for mm. students in terms of getting them to ideate and to plot um to plot their points and to write it. But I would never ever endorse students using that platform to write their assignments for them in a fulsome way. So mm. you can put something in it to get some ideas, right? To say, okay, where can I go with this assignment? Because many mm -hmm. times I will say this, sometimes it's an assignment, Kadia, and you don't know where to start. For real. And you have some lecturers, I mean, Professor, will, Professor, Professor first, I'm sure you're not like that, but you have many professors out there or lecturers who don't really help you. They don't explain it to you um, in a way that is meaningful. They drop some questions. You're like, you never teach me this. Like using, <laughs> using the patwa. And you're like, where should I go with this assignment? So... I do endorse it to the extent of use to help you brainstorm. And if right. you find you have like a writer's block, and I suffer from that as a law student many times, and you feel like you want to know where to go or how can you build on this point to use it for that purpose. But I would never endorse it for the use of writing your essay full sum and your cut and paste and drop it on the paper and submit it. Um, what I would also add as well is... Mm -hmm. I'm a little wary of it to the, to the extent of students no longer relying on themselves 
no longer rely on their intellect to push them forward. Mm -hmm. I think the very minute we lose those on critical thinking, you know, we want the young people in our schools to go on to become critical thinkers. They are the ideators of the future. Mm -hmm. So we don't want it to become a case where you're thinking, okay, I have an assignment, it's difficult. I'm going to rely on GPT to drive my ideas. Um, and then you lose out on you challenging yourself. Because mm -hmm. in the day, you know, it's not just about you getting a degree, a certificate, or whatever. It's also about how can you champion ideas for the future? How can you go on to become the person who can solve real issues. And when we look around Jamaica right now, we do need people who can solve issues, right? Mm -hmm. So I think our students, um, I would want them to ensure that they maintain a balance, a healthy balance between using ChatGP to assist them, but still using their brain first and foremost to challenge themselves and to help themselves. That would be my first statement. For real, for real. So I, I definitely agree with you. You hit several touch points because I, I, I said to people all the time, yes, my professors at UTEC did assist, I guess, with me passing, <laughs> with me getting my law degree, but I can tell you that Google was way more helpful. <laughs> That's for sure. Google was way more helpful. So yeah, you have Google Scholar and you have other tools wink wink that you can use to access resources to do your assignments i know that and this is how i learned how to use google i used to be able to find whole sections of books that i couldn't afford to to, to find information to do my assignment so tools have are, have been there where in the information age we have access to the internet and that has opened up a whole new world. I saw, I read an article where somebody says, you know, students have never, students in 2023 have never known a world where they had to go to a library and thumb through hundreds of thousands of pages to find information. Literally Google it, literally Google it. But let's ask chat GPT, let's ask chat B GPT if chat GPT should be used to do homework. ChatGPT says it would be considered cheating to use ChatGPT, chat, chat, I keep getting tongue-tied, or any other language model to complete homework or other assignments that are meant to assess your own understanding and knowledge of the material. The purpose of homework and other assignments is to help you practice and deepen your understanding of the material. So when you use ChatGPT to complete homework, it does not assess your understanding of the material, but the model's understanding of the material, which is not the same thing. Now, this is a computer explaining this to me. And I'm like, this is good. It is also considered academic dishonesty. And most schools have strict policies in place regarding cheating and plagiarism, as Dr. Forrester said. It's worth to note that using AI tools such as ChatGPT to help you with research, brainstorming, and writing could be beneficial, as Christina just said, and Neil said earlier, and an efficient way to learn as long as the work produced is original and the use of the tool is acknowledged. So, now you may have to just cite chat gpt in your work i'm going to ask us at neil and clive about that in short using chat gpt or any other language model to complete homework or other assignment is not an acceptable or ethical practice and could lead to serious consequences clive Yes. Chat GPT is disagreeing. Chat GPT said no, you should not be using me to do your assignments. Well, well, yeah, well, it depends on what you mean by doing your assignment. <laughs> because, well, well, the prompt was uh, obviously, is it obviously cheating? you shouldn't. Yeah, yeah, right. You obviously you, you shouldn't lift an answer wholesale from chat GPT into your assignment. Right. <laughs> but, but let, so so I, I like some of the examples that, that Christina mentioned, right? So so let us see that you are doing uh, some kind of assignment in philosophy, law, or whatever, and you are debating a particular topic. So, so let's say that the student is writing an essay where they are agreeing with euthanasia, right? right? So they want to put forward arguments for euthanasia. Now, everybody knows that if you're going to do a good argumentative essay, it's going to be important to, to at least be aware of what the counter-arguments are. Right. So you go to chat GPT, and then you type in, Give me the best counter-argument against euthanasia. 
and chat gbt will spit out what it considers to be the, the, the best the best um, argument against euthanasia and now being able to see that argument the students now designs their essay to mm -hmm. counter what they think is the best argument against their own position uh -huh. that's a creative way in which you could use chat gpt you know arguably it might be the professor now who, who will have to kind of guide students mm -hmm. on, on how to use it in that fashion I mean, the, the first instinct is to try to use the, the the artificial intelligence to design your whole assignment mm -hmm. and students invariably will want to do this because of the way that assignments are designed Mm -hmm. If you design an assignment which can be completed wholly by chat GPT in 10 seconds, this is, this is how long it usually takes to spit out a, like a 500 word response. 10 seconds. It means something is wrong with the assignment really and truly. <laughs> right? the, the assignment is inferior. And, uh, and, you know, we are now being aware of this because of how easily this thing is done. And remember now, so, so chat GPT I mean, it, it's a powerful tool because it, it, um, it's like a compilation of just about almost everything that was published up to 2021, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not accessing the internet. It's not pulling information directly from the internet in real time. Right. Fine. So it, it is not even at its full potential right now. Right. It's not, you know, and it's still learning. And it, it will tell you in its response that... Um, you know, some of this information might not be totally accurate. Mm -hmm. Good, because it's 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 synthesizing the information. It's like if if you had access to everything that was written, you could answer just about every single question. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, which is what it's trying to do. It's trying to synthesize the information as best as it can in a natural language format. Mm -hmm. Good. We can't ban it. We can't ban it. No. Yeah, um, um, Neil, Neil, I want you to weigh in on what uh, uh, Clive just said. Clive just said, is it AI or is it that your assignment is rubbish? Okay, <laughs> so is that a fair statement to make, Neil, as a, as a lecturer? Is that a fair statement to make? Because we are already acknowledging that AI is a very powerful tool. And even though it 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 it, it ends the, the the knowledge base that it was trained in ends at what 2021 and it doesn't have access to the internet, that's still a lot of knowledge that it was able to pull down. So yes. it has access to a very huge database of things. So of course it can easily answer a question. So is it fair to say that the assignment is inferior, or is it just that we're up against an extremely powerful tool? Um so educators, you know, lecturers and so on, they have to look at these assignments, the nature of these assignments um, that they're given. In, given. Um, certainly the first thing I would talk, talk about is um, policies that are in place, mm -hmm. uh, specific policies regarding the, the use of AI um, in coursework. I think universities need to look back at their policies just make it um, very specific and and then inform students that, you know, if there were any um, updates, changes to the policies, here they are, please be aware of them. And mm -hmm. so they know, all right. Then the, it's for lecturers now and lecturers will have to be um, maybe um, workshops and so on, on how to go about changing some of these assignments, some of these assignments that have been given year after year. Now with this tool available and, and, incre and students increasingly knowing about it, be prepared, be prepared. There, there, are, there are several approaches on how, um, you know, you can go about um, modifying your assignments mm -hmm. to, to make it, um, to, also include it if the, the institutional policies say that you can mm -hmm. all right so it's it's what what is it what how is it the policy structure does your policy does the policy say um it's unacceptable if so that may be workable or functional well because students are will be continually ignoring those policies then that's not a, a solution i think 
um, of any long period of time because students mm -hmm. will work around it. So it's how, what do lecturers now have to do in terms of restructuring their assignments? Because, you know, like I, I mentioned um, in, in um, to you earlier, it's like a wave coming in and you're building a, a, a sandcastle on the shore. That wave is going to come. It, crashing you know, into it. It's going to come crashed into it. So it's what are the different things um, that can be done by the facilitators to incorporate this tool um, into the, the, the coursework? So, so both yourself and Clive is saying that it needs to be incorporated, but is that giving professors more work to do on top of all of the work that they already have to do? Because, you know, Clive said earlier that a lot of the times these assignments remain unchanged for years. And that's why when I was in university, I could go find a past paper and I could just study a past paper. And I know I am guaranteed to pass the exam because exams questions don't necessarily change and the assignments don't necessarily change. And of course, these things get leaked online and you can find them. Would that be considered cheating? The jury's out on that one, but still. <laughs> but still, does that mean more work for the school administrator to do, for academic affairs people to do, for professors to do, for lecturers to maybe, do? Maybe, maybe initially, maybe initially it might seem like a little bit of extra work, but it's it's mm -hmm. productive work. So it's not it's not waste time work, is is actually productive work because mm -hmm. um, you know. To, to, to me, well, as I say, I, I think differently about this kind of thing. I, I kind of embrace the challenge right. to design an assignment, which is, in, in a sense, unplagiarizable, right? Oh, and, that's possible? In, in some ways, yes, right? In some ways, yes, right? A, an assignment which is unplagiarizable. If, if, if I sit back and I think to myself, all right, what, what, what are some of the ways in which students uh, cheat? And how can I design assignments which get around this, but at the same time won't consume all of my energy and will be something worthwhile for students, uh, for example. So the, the, the main way in which students presumably will use chat GPT to cheat is to mm. write assignments. Now, um, why is it that an essay is usually the main form of assessing a student's competence in a particular course. Oh, okay. So, so, okay. so right there. So, so that's that's a, and yeah. the reason the reason is because an essay is easy, <laughs> right? And an essay an essay question is easy to write. Easy, and easier a, as opposed to what though? As opposed to thinking about other creative ways in which you could test the competence of a student. Like what? All right. So, um, one of the the assignments that I'm uh, working on for, for one of my courses here at the University of Waterloo. Um, so I teach a brand new course. It's a course called Language, Life, and Literature in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the assignments I'm trying to uh, design is I want students to, to think about the, the Caribbean um, tradition that we call Jankuno, mm -hmm. right? And work on a new character to join the Jankuno band, which is Ooh. based on one of the Caribbean islands that they're assigned to, but has diasporic links to Canada. So they will have to come up with like a mythology behind this new character, um, uh, you know, write a, a kind of history behind this new character and design a 3D digital rendering of the character as well. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I'm flunking and, that one. <laughs> no, 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 no. But, well, you see, I, I could have just said, all right, you know, write, write an essay about Jankun or some nonsense. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. But th this is, of course, something that Chat GPT could do. And where else will students use that kind of skill of writing an essay about Jankun outside of the classroom? But the way that I'm rethinking the assignment will allow them to get skills in, you know, um, creating something, right? You mm -hmm. know, they're designing something in a in a kind of 3D digital space, mm -hmm. um, possibly working with a graphic artist mm -hmm. to communicate their ideas and come up with something original, right? Mm -hmm. This is something that I believe they could take into a potential career outside of the university. For sure. Right? So so it, it, it's the, the, the idea that essays are the only ways in which you could assess competence 
mm-hmm. in in a in a particular area. It's kind of ludicrous because um, there are not many occupations and careers which require you to demonstrate your competence in a particular area right. as an essay. Right. So we right. need to rethink some of these things. And uh, for me, as I say, it's a it's a challenge initially. But once mm-hmm. you start on that path, you you find that you open up so many other uh, possibilities, right? When when you when you think back to what education was like originally, mm-hmm. say for instance in ancient Greece, what people talk about uh, the Socratic method, how Socrates would teach his students, they would just walk around Athens, and Socrates would ask a question, and students would try to produce an answer, and then Socrates would ask another question, and they'd come up with an answer, and he would ask another question, and they would do that until the day ended <laughs> right and they would start again the following day and and essentially what what he was training his students um to do is not so much to come up with the right answer but to kind of ask the right questions mm-hmm. right and you know kind of think of creative ways to address a particular problem education is something totally different now it's like a factory mill um where you know you're just trying to push students through yeah um, get a particular qualification that kind of thing um so we, we've totally moved away from that form of education but mm. it doesn't mean that there isn't room for us to get back to creativity mm. and problem solving and you know forget all of this essay writing essay writing <laughs> um uh neil uh shamar mason said i think an unplagiarizable assignment is possible especially in it courses so as a, as an it lecturer how do you is that do you agree with that that it's 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 easier to create an unplagiarizable assignment in it courses or because i have seen where chat gpt have actually written an ex- code they have, it's actually written code to create x thing so it can actually write code for you as well so does that make the assignment unplagiarizable if this tool can actually write code yeah well that's that's a uh, it certainly can write code um and that's the application that one of the applications of it that was um very interesting to me and, and something which um brought it to my attention um initially all right the fact that and 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 the outcry of coders who now started to worry about their careers mm-hmm. um you know that, that that certainly was something that um was brought to my attention uh right away um so so you know it 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 certainly has a, a point in in that regard um I still think that there are ways, even in, in IT, to come up with um, work for students that can involve um, chat GPT, all right? Mm-hmm. Again, it, it goes to the, 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 the institution and whether they have an, a specific issue towards it. Um, but. I have some information here, um, mm-hmm. just just for educational institutions, um, facilitators who will take a little while to incorporate it into mm-hmm. um, their assignments. First of all, it, it it is good to hear that OpenAI will be working on ways to um, mark text created with its tool. Mm-hmm. Um, so that it's not easy for students just to um, utilize it um, wholesale. Also, Turnitin, uh, and I think Professor Forrester had mentioned Turnitin, which is mm-hmm. a, a tool used by um, lecturers to, to check. I think that was um, Christina. Christina, yes. Yeah. They released a video just last week because even as educational institutions are, are scrambling, companies like Turnitin even though they have been incorporating, as they claim, AIs, you know, for a number of years, this mm-hmm. for this specific um, issue, they are putting out. They just put out a video like eight or nine days ago, showing that they are working on this um, Chat GPT issue, and it's going to be coming um, up in a um, 
an update. All right. So so they're also they're they, creating something that can detect chat GPT. Yes, and there's Ooh. a um there there they have a link on their um YouTube account where this gentleman is showing exactly how it will respond to um an assignment written using chat GPT showing the errors where um Turnitin recognizes no it it they didn't specifically state how Turnitin knows that it's that section is created in chat GPT, but they seem confident enough that 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 addition to Turnitin um, mm. will work. Another another um interesting tool is something called GPT zero, and I don't know if anybody has heard of um, GPT zero. Mm -hmm. There's a website up GPT zero dot um, and it was created by a Princeton University senior, and he claims, and many who use it have attested. I haven't gone on it or signed up yet. Um, they have attested that it really can identify Chat GPT authored text rather effectively all right so so it's 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 a case of you now if if you have given um an assignment to the students and you hope that they are doing it themselves without assistance but you just want to make sure based on you no know, chat gpt there will be several ways to check that in the upcoming months or uh, th those will go mainstream certainly turn it in is a big one um open ai themselves recognize um the uproar the challenges they are assisting also but there are other ways that will come on stream so it's it's now um do policy do are we gonna ban it outright, are we going to have some leeway for individual uh, facilitators to find ways um, to make their assignments um, inclusive of this tool? Oh, yeah, I found it. And I'm not the user experience designer for the final product. I'm just the man behind the curtain. It's just a quick demo. Here's an example about etymology of the word thing. In fact, it did indeed all come from ChatGPT. And we can say, hey, 24 of these sentences out of all 24 came from ChatGPT. But here's a more interesting example. Here is a story written in the style of Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes stories. That I've made some edits to parts of it. I liked parts of it. I felt were a bit simplistic. So I went in and I added some, some more text, a little more narrative to the middle. Uh, I left a bit of the end alone as well. Can our detector tell us which parts were AI written and which parts were David written? Well, I sure hope so, because that's the point of this demo. Oh, good. Yeah, about half this essay, half this story was AI written. Uh, the beginning was left alone. Here's the part I changed. We're not quite sure, so we won't say much about the parts where it might be transitioning between human writing and AI writing. It's a fuzzy boundary. You don't want to do any harm by saying the wrong thing. And we transition back out of the AI writing into some more human writing and end with a few sentences from the machine. So that's what we hope to be able to share with you in some form, not just uh, a single magic number, but a bit of context when we're all done. So you can have these conversations with your colleagues and with your students. Katie, I think you're muted. You're muted. Sorry, did you guys hear that though? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, we yeah, heard. Yeah. yeah. So, we so we stop. just saw a demonstration from Turnitin of an assignment that was completely AI written that they 100% detected, <laughs> and an assignment that had him going in, you know, tweaking here and there, right. but they could still detect it. Yes. It, do you think, Christina? Do you think that's fair? Let's let's start there because if we're saying that. This thing can be used to help you with research. It can help you with writing prompts. It can help you to brainstorm. And you're taking this information and you're tweaking. So you're not 100% writing it all. But you're tweaking it here and there. You're putting in your own thoughts and, you know, spicing it up. Should it still be considered cheating or plagiarism? 
Okay, so yes, that's if we're using the definition of what plagiarism is, then yes. Uh, because once it's not your words, once it's not your thoughts, then if you don't cite, then it's plagiarism. And that's the standard across the board. It doesn't matter what you use. If you use your somebody else's assignment that was written, if you use um, study docs, study notes, if you use chat GPs, plagiarism is the same. Once it's not your words, you cannot present it as yours unless you cite. And that's the standard across the board. No matter what university you go to, that's the standard. Mm -hmm. So what if I cite chat GPT? <laughs> Well, no, that's should, the should, no, that's should the I be able to cite? No, chat that's GPT. the question. No, that's the question. No, you can't. Will you chat can't. GPT it's not an academic be, source. Well, well, if it's not an academic should it be source, an academic guess, source? No. Well, that's well, not for me well, to well, answer as a student leader. I think that's for the scholars. It can't be an too. academic source. Is it, it can't be an academic yeah. source. In the Why? same that's way that Google. It's not you know, well, well, here's the thing. Well, so so that's the first thing. Um, the, the matter of peer review, right? So no. When you search for something on Google, you, you can't mm -hmm. cite Google because Google isn't the isn't an academic source of whatever topic you're writing on. Mm -hmm. Google is a search engine that compiles a list of uh, searches, um, your search kits that that you can use to further your research. What ChatGPT does, mm -hmm. ChatGPT has the ability to read what's already in those search hits mm -hmm. and synthesize the information and output it in natural language. But even so, all ChatGPT is doing is pulling from things which are already published. Okay. So it's not creating a new, so to speak, like 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 a, like, like a, any new knowledge, uh, so to speak. It's it's already something so that's it's, published. So it's a better version of Google search engine. Essentially, right? If 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 what you want is a natural sounding um, result. So if schools have a problem with Google search engine, why they have a problem with ChatGPT, if that's what we're saying? Or is it that no, they're but, not but, looking but, at it that way? But, but people don't cite Google. That, that, that's the thing. Right. So people right. use Google. They use Google, but, they, but nobody cites. You, you, you can't put in your essay, Google, mm -hmm. 2023. <laughs> right. So you, is this why it's plagiarism, it? though, Neil Clive? Is it, is it plagiarism because chat doesn't necessarily cite sources when they're giving you that response they're taking right. the words putting the words together and giving you that response so technically i didn't cheat it cheated because it took the words not me no well so, but if, if you, if you I, don't think, I don't i don't think that's what it is either um KDR. You, okay. it, it's, it's, it's it's cheating when you take it from chat gpt right. and mm -hmm. you put it on paper and submit it so i want i think it's important using this platform that we make a clear distinction for students so they don't get it confused right it's not plagiarism when you go onto the platform and you google because you can google anywhere you can go anywhere right. to look at any information it only becomes plagiarism only becomes cheating when you when take you that information it. and you submit it correct yeah. so i think that's the decision needs to be made but i for wanted sure. to add mm -hmm. something um here because i i don't want it to be a case where we think that Oh, we're going to have Turnitin or any other um, um, chat GPT detector and it then solves the issue of chat GPT and we move on. I would love to see how we use this chat GPT uh, matter to inspire us to do what Professor Furster was talking about, to go and to really revise these curriculum, to revise these assignments where we're able to really build critical thinkers through the assignments because the truth is that we're going to have another chat gpt we may find out that's unbeatable it's possible you know it's possible that ai gets to a point where it becomes undetectable we never know it may not be in um well let's say mr Forrest's lifetime i think he's a bit older than i have <laughs> <laughs> Shots yes. fired. I'm joking. I'm joking. She's, she's right she's right no, but, but but, it but it it could happen within my lifetime. It could happen within yes, my lifetime. Exactly. That, because remember now, mm -hmm. chat GPT is only a few months old and it's right. getting better. Right. It doesn't have, it doesn't have what, access. What is going to happen when it have access to the internet? That's the thing, right? Right. So, well, 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 here's the thing. And this is a discussion that I had with my students in class. Missy says it should be called cheat GPT. <laughs> cheat GPT. <laughs> cheat GPT. Yeah, yeah. I, I had that discussion with, with, oh, with students funny. in class. Um, you know, because so, so there's this idea that once artificial intelligence and machine learning is advanced enough, mm -hmm. it will signal the end of work. Mm, just yes. just all work. So imagine a imagine a situation where 
your life wasn't dominated by the need to work. Because if I can if, imagine it. <laughs> right? I can imagine it very clearly. It's very <laughs> that's hard my, that's my wet imagine. dream. It's very hard for some people to imagine such a such a world where artificial intelligence is advanced enough to do everything that we would consider work. Mm. Fine. And and um, what 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 purpose would our lives be without work? So much of our life is dominated by work. Um, with for a lot of people, it would be identity shattering. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, no more work, no more career. Even thinking about it now is very difficult uh, for, for some persons. But we had that discussion that in one of the classes on academic writing as we were talking about mm -hmm. using chat GBT, right? So one day, chat GPT will be able to do all kinds of essays, mm -hmm. even master's theses and dissertations. Right. And, and what do we do then? What do we do at that point? Right? Last, because at mm -hmm. that point, we totally have to reevaluate the way that we think about assessing competence. We shouldn't wait till then, Professor. That's what my point I'm trying to make. We should take this as the prompt, right, yeah. to do that from now. So by the time it gets to that point, we are ready. I think yeah. we should really move away from this reactive response and try to be proactive. For right. sure. You know, I last year when we were doing the um, the future of work, I don't, you remember? Because um, yeah, Jutz was, yes, was, was, yes, was a partner. A part right? of it. Right, right, a partner. When we were doing the future of work, Youth Summit last year, Neil Clive, uh, we had a guest, um, Michael Clear. He's a CEO of Learn Serious, and he made a statement that stuck with me to this day. He says, technology kills work on site. The, that's the point of technology. And the more technology develops, the less it becomes necessary for us to work. So people are going to lose jobs and careers and stuff. But isn't that kind of the point of technology? Technology was supposed to simplify science, to simplify our lives as human beings. So why is it that universities want students to suffer, suffer all, oh, <laughs> by not incorporating chat GPT into, as a learning tool? If, okay, so we all agree it is cheating. Even chat GPT says cheating. If you use me to do your assignment, don't do that. Use me as a learning tool. What, what about chat GPT as a learning tool, Neil? How can schools use chat GPT as a learning tool without encouraging students to use it to cheat? Because that's a fine line, I think. Um, well, I think uh, Professor Forrester um, mentioned some of these things that could um, be incorporated. Um, mm -hmm. Certainly, I look at <clears throat> even though I was uh, point out some ways that um, institutions could use it to detect where it's being used, certainly mm -hmm. I know in the long term that is not work. That's not workable. All right, it, right. It's more, it has to be incorporated. All right, it's just like the calculator. I'm sure when the, when the calculator came on the scene, um, you know, persons were saying, "Well, this, you know, students can't be using this thing in class." you know, probably in the 70s and so on. But mm -hmm. eventually, a way was found to incorporate it, um, mm -hmm. you know. So so in a similar sense, <clears throat> there has, you know, there has to be um, ways to incorporate it, all right? So, um, you know, teachers have to, to, to um, pair it along with other um, in-class discussions, as the professor said. Um, use it to um, create probably outlines for assignments and then um, students expand on those outlines um, mm -hmm. for, and, and, and certainly on the side of the educators, there are opportunities using it um, to generate curricular um, lecture notes, test questions, things like that, rubrics, yeah. you know. Um, I was on a, I came across somebody who has an institution called Kaleidoscope, and she's saying, yeah, um, she is exhorting this incorporation of, of chat GPT. And, and, and she said that if, if schools ban it um, and the tools that follow it, because this is, it's, it's just the first big disruptor, but it's, there are many that follow this chat GPT. It's actually GPT 3.54 is on, is in, mm -hmm. in development and, and, the, and the it's going to go pro. Yeah, and a knowledge base of four is exponentially 
um, greater than um, 3.5. So if, if you ban these tools, um, she basically said that they'll be um, these institutions are tightening the screws on all ideas about what education should be. And, mm -hmm. and so it's how to give, how to um, create um, work for students that, that gives, gives them a way to express, putting up the, 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 the personal, putting up the, 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 their point of view on things rather than just um, speak yeah. about something without no, yeah. their right, personal right. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. input, how they feel. And so, mm -hmm. when, and so these assignments that are sitting there that I, uh, have been coming um, year after year, look back at them. How now to weave in, um, restructure them, um, how to, to make them more personalized. Mm -hmm. So, so and it's going to be tricky because even like the um, point of view personalization, you know, it's they might you might have interest in prompts, mm -hmm. uh, the way how you, you you structure the query, that might overcome some of these. But um, the lecturers, uh, facilitators, now yeah. really have to address it. Really have to start thinking. Look at these assignments. See if it's not contrary to policy. How right. you know can use it? How mm -hmm. can I use this tool? You can't fight against it. It's it's not yeah. going anywhere. It's a, it's a first of much stronger, more powerful ones yeah, to come. Yeah, yeah. And you know, the, the truth in a Neil is that um, so a lot of educators actually have the capacity and the competence to create such assignments and to create that kind of learning environment that is necessary. Mm -hmm. It's just that the, the nature of modern day education is such that there are so many constraints that your hands are, are almost tied sometimes. So, so one of the issues I mentioned earlier was designing an assignment using the scaffolding model. And scaffolding simply means something like, so let's say you have a writing assignment. A student would come up with an idea for the assignment, but then they have to communicate that idea to the professor, and the prof professor refines that assign, uh, the idea. And then they do a proposal, but then the proposal has to be refined. And then they do a draft, and the draft has to be refined. And then they, do, they submit the final version. So the, 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 that assignment is constructed in a kind of collaborative um, process with the professor and maybe with other students in the classroom. And in a way, it ensures that the assignment is originally generated from that particular student. That's a very good way to design, um, especially writing assignments. But you tell me, is this possible in a classroom of 60 students or in a classroom of five? It's, it's way easier to do in a classroom of five students. But as students, as, as, as the number of students increase in a classroom, it becomes increasingly difficult for one teacher, one professor to, to, to do these kinds of creative things where each student has the ability to refine their assignment in, in a kind of iterative process between the instructor and themselves. Now, especially for, for folks in the humanities, social sciences, a lot of us have classes which are much larger than five students. And what you're going to do now as an instructor is to take the path of least resistance and say, all right, the assessment for this course is one essay and one final um, exam which was the assessment model for all of my courses when I was a, a, a student at UA, a 40% essay and a 60% final exam. No, you tell me <laughs> that, 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 uh, and it, it was done that way because of how the classrooms were set up, the number of students. So you're were, saying <laughs> that one possible, so it's funny how, this new technology, well, relatively new to the public, I mean, the AI yeah. has been around for a while, so new to the public. So this new to the public technology is, is actually bringing up back old issues that schools and universities have had about yeah. class size right. and the ratio of teacher to students and how that impacts learning and creativity in the classroom and what you said earlier professor is how that actually creates mills right. education mills where yeah, you're just yeah, churning yeah, yeah, out yeah, yeah, yeah. just churning out because the, you, even even this um software that detects chat gpt 
No. <laughs> All right. I good. It's there, which is good. <laughs> no. Which professor in a class of two hundred have time to police every single assignment and then set up the disciplinary hearing? That's how it's done at universities. Uh -huh. That require that is required when you detect a case of plagiarism. So Fine. don't you guys run all your assignments through plagiarism tools? Not all the time. Not every single assignment. Not every single not, not every single assignment is run through like um Turnitin, uh for for instance, right? Oh. Not every single assignment. And what about and, exams? Exam well, if the if the exam is so a lot of exams are written. You mm -hmm. you can't do nothing with that. <laughs> Fine. Well, so yeah. Yeah. But but like uh, major assignments, you might run through plagiarism detection software, right? Mm -hmm. No, so you have a class of two hundred students, mm -hmm. and and based on the plagiarism detection or whatever, let's say sixty of them show that they've been using Chat GPT, right? Mm -hmm. No, the the easy process is to just give all sixty students a zero, but that mm -hmm. won't fly. Students are going to challenge it. Some students are going to say, well, I merely used it to enhance what I was already working on. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to know, investigate all 60 cases, mm -hmm. potentially carrying 45 of them to a disciplinary hearing. Who have time for that? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so so, so even, even, th even that to me is, is bringing up nightmarish situations at the end of a term where you have so much additional work to do. To do, yeah. Design the assignment, foolproof AI proof the assignment from the in start. the first place. <laughs> right. Look at look at this, guys. Christina, look at this. So we're talking about how students can use Chat GPT. So I asked Chat GPT again. I asked Chat GPT, can it be detected? Can Chat GPT be detected? And Chat GPT says. It is possible to detect. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because according to OpenAI, again, the makers of this tool, they have, they're trying to make sure that you can't use ChatGP to, 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 to cheat. And there are certain things that you can't ask ChatGPT outright, or you're not supposed to be able to ask outright. So I couldn't ask ChatGPT, how can I use you to cheat? Because it's going to tell me, can't answer that question. Uh, but if I rephrase it in this way, so instead of saying, um, how can I use chat GP to cheat? I ask it, can it be detected? Because if it tells me how it can be detected, I can find ways around that to cheat. And it did right. tell me, it says it is possible to detect when chat GPT or other language tools are being used to generate text, but it may not be a straightforward task. And they then went on to give me several ways that I, they, it can be detected. So it talks about checking for grammatical and semantic errors. AI generated text may contain errors that a human writer would not make, such as awkward word choices or grammatical mistakes. Mary no so many for going on my uh, chat GPT and just like the, the example in the turn it in and tweak, right? Comparing the text to known sources, if the text is found to be identical or very similar to existing text, it may have been generated by a language model. Okay, what if I just add quotation marks around that and then cite that source? Boom, handled. Then, using language model detection software, there are several software programs available that can detect AI-generated text by analyzing the text structure and style. Okay, I'll rewrite it in my own style, which is what I, anyways, mm. I, I, I ain't going to out myself today, <laughs> okay? Well, the, and so, then the last so, so one Kedia, is... What you're, what you're showing is that a student who is determined to cheat will cheat. Will the, cheat, but, so me, but AI no can actually tell me how to cheat. And, and, and even in those situations, yeah, there yeah. Are, we have students who, I guess we could consider them advanced cheaters. They will not be caught fine yeah. and and those students graduate and get jobs at financial institutions and do all kind of strange things um, when uh -oh. the time comes right? uh -oh. uh -oh. <laughs> it's the truth you have people who are advanced cheaters who will not get caught but the vast right. majority of students don't want to cheat so so right. you know the vast majority of students want to do honest work there are students okay. who are advanced I'll cheaters take your they won't word be for caught it. Yeah, that, yeah I, I think so. I think the vast majority of students want to do honest work and mm -hmm. actually want to be engaged um, in their uh, learning. They want to take charge of their learning. 
-hmm. but what 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 it seems that people are worried about is is trying to catch the advanced cheaters why waste time right students so you, sh you, sh are you should let them cheat, slide cheat. is that a matter all right yeah put in place the measures to catch them but let us not expend all of our energy on um trying to catch people who are hell-bent on cheating so somebody in the comments on youtube says my concern is lecturers who continue to be impressed with the work of cheaters but give hell to those who do original and independent work for example final year projects so basically what you just said clive is if they are smart enough to go undetected then hey a win is a win a win yeah. Is what, a what, what can he do? Because <laughs> because the, the, the whole point, especially at the university level, right? When I go into the classroom, uh, you know, I design my lesson, I design my assignments, mm -hmm. um, and I go into the classroom and I'm and I'm teaching. I am interested in reaching the students who want to be reached, who right. who want to be engaged in the lesson, who want to take charge of their learning, and who want to do the assignments in an honest fashion. Right. For, for for students who will always try to cheat and always try to circumvent things, regardless, they're just of gonna what find a way anyway. They they're going to find a way. All right, right? guys, so, let's let's yeah. let's wrap up. Let's wrap up quickly. I mean, this conversation is gonna go on forever. So the the the, the last questions are two, so two questions. The la, the um should Chat GPT and other AI tools be regulated? Again, I asked Chat GPT if it should be regulated and this is what it says chat gpt says it is important to consider the regulation of tools like chat gpt as they can have significant impacts on society these tools have the potential to revolutionize many industries and improve people's lives but they also have the potential to be misused or abused and regulation can help ensure that tools are developed and used ethically and responsibly and then it gave me examples of potential regulations. So ethics guidelines, establishing guidelines for the ethical development of AI tools. So we're, this is talking about AI ethics, laws, and governance, right? Which we're going to discuss next week. Transparency requiring companies to disclose when AI tools are being used and how decisions are made. Bias detection, algorithm, algorithmic accountability, and data privacy. So chat GPT is giving us examples of how you can regulate tools like chat GPT. And I want to know if you guys agree with some of the examples um, of chat GPT. Um, Neil, what do you think? Do you think these are good examples of how to regulate a tool like chat GPT? Yeah, but I, I, um, as you went down the list, I was saying um, some of these um, are really could be effective ways of um, regulating chat GPT. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, you know, in terms of ethical considerations that has right. to be spelled out and, and so on. So everything has to be to be clear, um, you know, um, in, in, in the educational institutions, students have to have an understanding, um, lecturers have to, to also um, understand and you know know what their responsibilities are so I, I i agree with many of what was stated on that list christina i agree um that uh the examples are uh, proposed by chat gpt would be a good place to start um with it however i think uh another part of the regulation that we speak of is less about the policy that we have in place because many times these policies are not enforced and mm -hmm. we see that in the university space um so uh, aside from having these different guidelines or um different uh policies within the universities or just overall in terms of regulation mm -hmm. i think we also need to ensure that just the very way in which we interact with students also helps to regulate the space so i think if we go back to the principle of what we're trying to do at the university level which is to create thinkers and doers and if we approach everything in that way how we create the curriculum how we create the assignments how we um assess the assignments mm -hmm. if we approach everything with that overarching principle then that's also a form of regulation as well um for ai because we don't have these very these um assignments or assessments that are so easily responded to by an ai 
right? right? So I think the principle itself of creating thinkers and doors in of itself can actually be a form of regulation. Mm. Clive? Yeah, uh, so so these are suggestions of um, regulations that could be used sound fine, but we need to remember that these are primarily applicable to institutions like educational institutions and media houses, which have a kind of ethical responsibility to produce mm -hmm. things under a very rigid policy of honesty. But right. like for, for regular everyday people. So, so just the other day, I was on Dal E and I was trying to draw a rolling calf. Right? <laughs> and, and it's not the easiest thing to do. Right. Because because you had to put in very specific prompts and it came out with some pretty good projections of, of what this Jamaican duppy would look like. Now, if, if I am, say for instance, I'm a person who is a storyteller and as a part of my storytelling technique, I have an image of a rolling calf displayed in the background. When I go to tell my stories, I don't have to tell people that is the AI generated this, this image of the rolling calf, mm -hmm. you know, because what is important is, is my storytelling skill. Fine. So as, as regular members of the public who aren't necessarily journalists or educators are trying to hand in an assignment, start to use this artificial intelligence. And, and by, by using it, you actually improve it. Mm -hmm. Right? You, you right. actually improve it when, when you start to um, you know, use it. Because somebody said they want to see what came up for your rolling car. <laughs> right. I, I don't have the picture right now, but it, it, it is way better than I could have done on my own. Wow, yeah. So, 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 so if you know, so Missy, I see the person, I see Missy uh, commenting, um, why don't you go to Dal E? It's D-A-L-L-E. Right. Go there and go to the which is also bar. another open AI tool. It's an open AI tool, it's like the cousin of Chat GPT. Go there and in the search bar, type in half man, half cow, demonic, um, fiery pupils, chains around torso. Don't wow. type in rolling calf, you have to type in the prompt like that. So, half come, man, let I'm gonna cow. we're gonna do it right now. <laughs> come, 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 come. Let me share so, my screen. So, so, type in half man, half okay. Cow. Hold on, hold on. Let me share the screen, you know, like demonic, scary. So, what we're typing in? Oh, wait, so let me let me log in. <laughs> no, I already have an account. So I'm logging log in. in. Okay, all right. So, go on, talk time while I, while I do so, this thing, right. So as regular members of the public start to, to use the artificial intelligence tools, it will improve, you know, the kinds of output that, that it has, but it will more or less enhance the ways that we use uh, technology. Nowadays, you know, people just want to, um, you know, whether it is generate content for their blogs, their um, half websites, man, half that kind call. of thing. So, so, so put a space and put a comma after each one. So half man, half comma. Man. Half, half cow, cow, comma, demonic, demonic comma, comma, fiery pupils, fiery pupils, comma, That's it? comma, comma, chains around torso, chains around torso. All right. And now, and now, comma, wait, a comma, because now you want a particular art style. So now right. you have to put something like stylized oil painting. Stylized oil painting. All right. All right. We'll generate and see what comes up. It takes a while. So it's generating. So now. it's generating. Okay. Yeah. And it will give you four. Ooh. So, uh, yeah. All right. Not not what not very frightening. <laughs> well, not really. <laughs> right. This but, was like a blinged out cow. Yeah. But, but you see, the good thing now is that you can take one of them, uh -huh. one of those images, erase a part of it, and then regenerate, okay. giving, it a, giving it additional information. Suppose right? I say style, uh, suppose I say cartoon. All right. Cartoon rendering. Cartoon rendering. Okay. Let's see. And then, of course, you but Clive, you were like saying TV earlier TV that TV. you know one of the on plagiarism assignments you were talking yeah. about having them generate a character. Suppose I use this to generate a character for that assignment. Well, what I would get the students to do is to work with a digital artist, an actual artist instead. <laughs> oh, these are horrible. Yeah, fine. So, well, because you put cartoon. Well, well, you, another prompt that you could put: uh, erase cartoon rendering. Put put instead. 
in the style of Van Gogh's Starry Night. So Van Gogh spell, right? Ah, uh, yeah, cool, yeah. Let's see what he comes up with. Oh, still look uh, like a blinged out cow. <laughs> 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 but but you get we get the point we get the point you get, we get, a, you the, get point, the idea right. right and and this is as I say it will improve uh, provided yeah. that you know you know what you wanted to output but um, maybe so the public should just should just try it for themselves yeah try to try to 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 do their own kind of experimentations with it right. um, cheaters will always cheat that we won't we can't stop that right we can't stop that what we should try to do is evolve and stay evolve. ahead of the technology by um you know being creative and doing things that are uniquely human so and it's going AI to do the ai stuff <laughs> right so so but basically what you're saying is as technology evolve schools need to evolve everybody everything needs to evolve which is what we've been saying right. um and and um, teachers are gonna have to get even more clever than than the students and people who want to learn will learn people who want to cheat will cheat i asked i asked um chat gpt what policies are needed for proper regulations and you saw us scrolling through and and, and it was talking about um policies we're not going to get into that here because we're already over time but it did throw up some really good policies so i'm gonna ask you guys for your final word right so you know clive just said cheaters are gonna cheat i no amount of sophisticated policy or regulation gonna stop people from cheating because people are just clever <coughs> and to, to be honest in some instances the fact that they were able to get around certain detection system means that they're probably extremely clever anyways. So there you go. But Neil, what, what is your final take um, on AI, on schools embracing AI regulations? What, what's your final word? Uh, just that they'll have to in time and get ahead of the curve. Um, echoing um, Dr. Forrester, they have to evolve. Um, right. You can't... You, you, it's, it's hard to... to um have policies for the avoidance of this mm -hmm. but then they graduate into a world where it's going to be ai encompassing and integrated you know mm -hmm. so just understand what is coming mm -hmm. and prepare yourselves prepare the students it's inevitable okay all right christina uh um Professor, sorry, <laughs> Neil said it's inevitable. They're going to go out into the world and it's going to be a thing. And as a school, it is your responsibility to prepare them for the world, the real world. So might as well we all tuck in. What do you say? Uh, my final word is similar to that. You know, we have to utilize AI, whether chat GPT or any other platform as a learning tool. Mm -hmm. And we should we should ensure that we teach our students how to use it responsibly. To me, it seems almost like you're trying to burn books again. We're, we're going back to the Ooh. days when we try to burn books and ban okay. books. Don't try to ban AI because it is an integrated part of our society. Teach us how to use it responsibly. What I would say to my students, because I would like to leave a message for the students as well. Don't rely on AI completely to the point that you lose your ability to think for yourselves because the world needs thinkers and doers. So balance it out, learning tool, but still keep your mind active and focused and do the thing. Right. Don't lazy up your mind by just throwing everything into chat. I want to see why she's the president of the Jamaica Union of China. Ah! Oh, no, see now. All right. Thank you, Christina. And I give the final, final word to, to Clive. What is, I know you, you are embracing it. I know there's something to be said about younger professors, younger lecturers maybe, embracing yeah, this because maybe. they are millennial. You're a millennial. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm and maybe older millennial. And, and, yes, I'm an yeah, older yeah, millennial. We're elder millennials, <laughs> Clive. We're elder millennials, but still millennials, right? So there's yeah, something yeah, to be said yeah, about yeah, how yeah. our outlook on things right. may be different from right. school administrators that tend to be old fogies. Let's be real. Right. right? Yeah. And they are not yet, they can't even type two words on a computer properly, much less. You know, if it was a mobile phone, much less. But right. they are in positions where they're regulating and creating policies around how students learn and it may be a situation where they're holding students back final yeah, word yeah, yeah yeah well um i i agree with what neil and christina said that they're they're right on the mark 
where you know evolving and embracing the technology is concerned um a lot of university administrators and even professors tend to think that a, a university they, they still have this kind of ivory tower image of a university where it mm. is kind of immune to certain things happening Bastions of... <laughs> yeah and and, and kind of you know impervious to right. whatever advances there are in technology and innovation and, and that kind of thing but universities haven't been like that for a very long time universities some universities are, so, are ghetto <laughs> so, well i don't want to go that way but <laughs> I, 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 the modern university now has to yeah. be integrated into um the corporate world and what is going on in industry and uh, you know innovations in technology and mm -hmm. this is one of them mm -hmm. fine so it, yes it will take a while for things to adjust mm -hmm. but we should at least you know ensure that we are not left behind for sure where certain kinds of you know developments are, are are concerned and um yeah you know as as we continue to use this we'll find out useful ways in which we can um, incorporate the technology into our classroom we shouldn't try to resist it there, there's no point in in doing that resistance is futile okay it's futile. Yeah. <laughs> all right guys that that's that's the show for today um resistance is futile it's the future we're supposed to be preparing children young people for the future and university is usually a place where they go to get a taste of what life is like in the real world you're networking you're communicating with people you're learning together you're working together it's actually kind of your first taste of being an adult you know oh, oh so if, if university is like a microcosm of what the real world is like, then they need to experience things in that space that will prepare them for the real world. And so in that case, I, I completely agree that this is not, first of all, it's not something that we can control, regulate, sure, but it's definitely not something that, that can be controlled. I don't even think it can be controlled by the persons who create it because even open ai have admitted to people being able to misuse chat gpt by again just rewording you know rephrasing prompts and tricking the system so there you go so if it's not something that we can stop if technology is not something that we can you know stop and why would we want to hinder our own human progress in a way and if that is the case then how do we embrace it what laws should we have in place to govern it what are the ethical rules we should establish about how we go about using it that's what we're going to be talking about next week when we have samantha sims attorney at law she's a tech attorney and she's going to be on to talk about AI law and governance. And some of the questions that she's going to answer for us is, should AI be free? Because ChatGPT has a pro version coming. So should AI tools like ChatGPT be free? The ethics of them going pro, right? Um, can, P, can AI, um, can the makers or creators of AI be sued? for taking people's information how will ai access data um and do they have to pay for that data and intellectual property and ai how we're going to work all of that out we're going to be talking about that next week in the final episode of our ai series so i hope you guys join us next week for that thank you christina thank you neil thank You're you welcome. clive for a very interesting discussion and thank you to everybody who tuned in and shared their two cents in the chat y'all were hilarious today uh, really appreciate that and we will see i will see you guys uh next week bye <laughs> how do i end this thing oh yes video outro <music>